The average man could just about reach the top of a giraffe's legs. They're the tallest animal on the planet. One of the leftovers from the days when the world was covered in massive mammals, just over 11,000 years ago. Many models of giraffe came and went over millions of years. This extreme form started to take shape in the last two million years, and no one really knows why. What is the reason for that neck, those long legs, and that tongue? which is one and a half feet long. How is an animal with the giraffe's proportions able to maintain such grace and dignity and remain so successful on the African plains? The distinct coat of a giraffe helps it blend in, although it doesn't have many adversaries to hide from. At up to one and a half tons, the male giraffe is twice as heavy as a cow. And it has cloven hooves like its fellow grazer, but twice as wide. On those lanky six-foot legs, they amble with elegance. Using that even longer neck like a pendulum to balance, they swagger with a certain rhythm. A male giraffe is just under 20 feet tall. Special ligaments in their legs are needed to hold everything up. Their neck has seven vertebrae, like a human's, but each one is as long as a human head. With measurements like this, what could the giraffe possibly fear out on the savanna? Besides the occasional thunderstorm. Other prey animals like having giraffes around for obvious reasons. At that height, they're the first to spot danger. But the giraffe is really only wary of one predator. The lion. Hunting in a pride, they can be a real threat, even to the adults. So the giraffe is not afraid to run. Those long legs are strong. They can accelerate surprisingly quickly and maintain speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. Lions can sprint at around 50 miles per hour, but only for short bursts. So the giraffes are just fast enough to stay ahead of the big hungry cats. When a mother giraffe is cornered, she'll stand her ground. Her powerful legs are a lethal weapon. One kick to a lion's head could kill. Sometimes lions are hungry enough to want to bring down an adult giraffe. They do so at their own risk. It's a tall order, 
Giraffes are often too much like hard work. But if a mother does let her guard down, a calf will make a decent meal for carnivores. Only around half will make it to their first birthday. The giraffe and its ancestors once roamed Europe and Asia, but now they're only found in Africa. Living in isolated groups across the continent, there are nine subspecies in all, each with a slightly different shade and design to their patchy coat, and each specifically adapted to their own habitat. The most extreme habitat being some of the oldest deserts in the world. The Angolan giraffe has the palest pattern. Thought to be extinct in Angola, it survives now mostly in Namibia, perfectly matched to the sand. A land with mostly dry riverbeds, it's a tough place to live. With little vegetation here, this calf relies on his mother's milk to survive. Their main enemy lives here too. Lions wait patiently for signs of weakness. With less than two inches of rain a year and very few trees, exactly how these big herbivores manage to survive here is a mystery. Giraffes can sometimes go weeks without water, but this mother and calf are severely dehydrated. The vultures are as patient as the lions. Sunset brings some relief. Nighttime temperatures drop to almost freezing. enough to allow mist to form. This fog is the lifeblood of the desert. Barely any rainfall means animals depend on it for precious moisture. At dawn, clouds evaporate, leaving water droplets on the leaves. The mother and calf move quickly to soak them up, satisfying their thirst for now. But as the dry season intensifies, they will need to find a more reliable source of water. And they know just who to follow. The other big vegetarian in the desert is also in search of sustenance. The dry riverbed is the best place to start. These desert elephants are particularly resourceful in a land with little water. The giraffes follow the elephants to some anna trees. These remarkable trees can draw water from deep underground and survive the dry season, even bearing nutritious fruit. So they're popular with many creatures, like these baboons. The anna trees can grow to 80 feet tall, so sometimes the pods are too high to reach, even for a giraffe. These pods are the one vital source of protein for the mother and calf. If they can't get to them, they may not survive. Why is the giraffe so tall? There's one obvious answer. To get to the food that others can't reach. There's no real competition all the way up there, nearly 20 feet in the air. But 
they don't always reach so high. Females often bend down to feed, grazing from the ground like other herbivores on the savanna. Known to eat over a hundred different plant species, a giraffe's favorite food is a common sight across Africa. The acacia trees. Also known as thorn trees, there are many different types, and they're not the easiest thing to eat. But giraffes are built for the job of tackling the acacia's defenses. A long skinny head allows the giraffe to get in close, and special bones in their skull allow the head to tilt almost 180 degrees to reach even higher. They can close their nostrils so the spines can't slip in. Long lashes protect the giraffe's big brown eyes. Their lower teeth work like a comb, stripping the leaves from the spiny branches. But the giraffe's most incredible tool is its tough prehensile tongue. It's as long as a child's arm and pretty nimble. The purplish color protects it from the sun. With these skills, a giraffe can tackle anything with spines. Brought from North America, this plant doesn't even belong here. But the ever-hungry giraffe has found a way to tuck into a meal of cactus. Extra tough skin in their throat and gut allows them to swallow the sharp spines. Thick antibacterial saliva coats the thorns and prevents infections from prickly wounds. But the younger ones aren't so sure. Although giraffes are vegetarians, they're also known to suck on old bones. It's called osteophagia. Among other nutrients, this helps them increase the amount of calcium in their diet, which in turn keeps their bones strong. Getting the right nutrients is a constant battle for animals living on the African savanna. Back in the grueling Namibian desert, things are even tougher. The hungry mother and calf can't reach the anna tree pods, so they wait. And then it happens. An elephant shakes the anna tree. They may not have the giraffe's long neck, but they do have a trunk with which to reach up high. Dinner is served for everyone. But it's time for the giants to pull rank. It's a well-earned snack for the hungry mother and calf. Awkward to reach, but worth the effort. The pods are full of protein. Mother and calf are running out of time. They still need to find precious water before the dry season tightens its grip. All giraffe species across Africa can withstand intense heat, but they still need to rest during the hottest part of the day. Their coats aren't just for camouflage. They help to regulate body temperature too. 
A sophisticated system of blood vessels under the patches allows them to lose heat more easily. Taking only 20 minute power naps at a time, they sleep the least of any mammal on Earth, only around four hours a day. And they'll only sit to rest if one remains standing to watch for danger. So giraffes spend most of their time eating. Around 75 pounds of vegetation a day. Just like cows, they're ruminants and have four compartments in their stomach to digest all the plants they consume. Bacteria in the gut helps, but they also need to chew the cud. Waves of contractions bring the food back up to the mouth for more chewing. It's pretty much what they do all day. The giraffe's heart is nearly 30 times heavier than a human's, and their blood pressure is twice as high as any other animal. Standing up is a battle with gravity. But special valves in their vessels prevent a sudden loss of blood from the head, so they don't faint. They can jump up quickly, especially when disturbed. Scientists from the Giraffe Conservation Foundation are keeping track of these Rothschild giraffes in Uganda. Each animal's unique pattern makes them easy to identify. Testosterone causes the bulls to go darker every year. Annual photographs mean the team can keep tabs on each one. Giraffes were once more abundant across Africa. Extinct in some countries, now only small populations remain, separated by large distances. A team of researchers want to get skin samples from the same animals so they can study how they're related. A small piece of skin will be enough. Tiny samples will be sent to a lab. With them, the scientists hope to create a clearer picture of each animal's connection to the other. Much about them remains unknown. We do know that giraffes have no fixed territories. They just wander and feed from tree to tree. Their progress is only blocked by natural boundaries like lakes and rivers. For giraffes have never been known to swim. Female giraffes stick together in family herds, and the males often become loners. Except, of course, when it's that time of year. Time for the males to fight over access to the females. There's another theory for those long necks. They're a weapon used by the males to fight for a mate. Around the age of three or four, young male giraffes start to strut their stuff and make a play for the top spot, the alpha male. This is where the other theory for that long neck comes in. Male giraffes use it as a weapon. 
The longer and heavier the neck and head, the more power they have. Hardened lumps of cartilage attached to the skull are also part of the arsenal. These horns, or ossicones, grow bigger with age. The males begin to perfect their fighting skills early in life, starting off playfully. But things can quickly get out of hand, and there are no rules. Unsurprisingly, it's known as necking. Now it's time to use those horns. At the end of a 500 pound swinging neck, they can cause real damage. Male giraffes have other strategies too. Lifting an opponent's leg can throw him off balance. It's a graceful and dangerous dance, which can occasionally end in death. Some experts believe that the giraffe's extreme neck is not just about eating from tall trees. It's about winning the female and passing on those genes to the next generation. After the battle, the males even practice mating with each other. The hostilities are over, for now. It's time to focus on the female. First step is to test whether she's in heat and ready to mate. The bull takes a sip of the female's urine. Then he uses a technique called the Flamen response. By lifting his top lip, he can guide pheromones from the urine to an organ in his mouth. The right smell and taste means she's an estrus. The bull may spend days trying to mate with her. Once pregnant, she has to wait 15 months until her calf is born. Back in the Namibian desert, the young giraffe is not getting enough water and still desperately needs his mother to survive, at least until he's 18 months old. The heat of the afternoon tests their endurance. A dust storm covers them with fine sand. Eyes, ears, throat and coat it gets everywhere. This is an extreme habitat in which to survive, where rainstorms are a rare event. The calf is very thirsty now. Rain falls briefly in the distance, but it's too far away. The riverbed remains dry. It's time to go in search of fresh water. But even before their journey begins, they face a big challenge. How to get out of the dry riverbed? Climbing is not necessarily a giraffe's forte, and the ascent is anything but graceful. The heavy bull hesitates. At the top, 
the thirsty mother and calf can't afford to wait. Perhaps a longer run-up will help. Finally, he decides the steep slope isn't for him and takes the long way round. Desert giraffes will walk many miles a day when seeking food and water. They head towards another potential waterhole. But again, the elephants have got here first. The giraffes need to keep their distance from these bulky beasts. All they can do is be patient and wait. While they wait, after 15 months in the womb, a baby giraffe enters the world. There are many benefits to being so tall, but there's still no escaping those pesky bugs in the African bush. Even the giraffe is not immune. Fleas, lice, flies and ticks are unavoidable out here. But they have found ways to cope. One way is to use that long, flexible tongue. Another, to flick their tail. They also use tools. When you have an itch to scratch, nothing beats a good, sharp stick. This giraffe breaks a branch to make it even sharper and uses it to scratch an itch in its ear. Giraffes recruit help too. Ox peckers are a big mammal's best friend. These birds are often seen hitching a ride with the giraffe and make a feast of all the biting insects. In another part of the bush, the pregnant mother giraffe is ready to give birth. In this rare amateur footage, she finds a private place for the event. The mother paces as the calf comes out, hooves first. Most large herbivores give birth standing up, which is fine when you're not so far from the ground. But this newborn has quite a way to drop. In only 30 minutes, he'll be up and ready to go. His coat camouflages him in the tall grass. Six foot tall at birth, he can grow an inch a day and will be about double the size by one year old. During the first days after birth, Mother and calf take time out from the rest of the herd. But not for long. The calf is extremely vulnerable to predators, so they soon get back to the group. Something else is about to disturb their peace. Another research team is on the move, this time in South Africa. They want to attach another satellite transmitter to one of the giraffes in the area. This will help them follow the herd and learn more about the behavior of another subspecies, the South African giraffe. It's easier from above, but they must avoid separating mother and calf. They set their sights on another female.
They need to get as close as possible to make the tranquilizing shot. They force the group into the open. The tranquilizer quickly takes effect. The giraffe slows down. But she runs in the wrong direction towards a lake. The crew must stop her before she falls in. For her own protection, they try to help her down. The scientists must work quickly. They sedate the animal, cover her eyes and give her extra oxygen. They measure her huge body and give her a name, Annette. The crew monitors Annette's vital statistics as they attach a transmitter to her ear. She's not fully sedated, so they carefully avoid those powerful legs. Getting a one-ton animal back up again is another matter. They inject an antidote, and Annette is back on her feet in no time. She heads off to rejoin the herd. The transmitter won't harm the animal, and it's a vital key to their research. For giraffes still hold many secrets including how they communicate with each other. Up until now, no one's fully understood how giraffes talk to one another. Even with those long throats, they were always thought to be silent. With incredible eyesight and that elevated view, related animals can possibly recognize each other by their individual patterns. But no one knows for sure if, how, and what they communicate. Flapping ears and a flicking tail don't appear to be saying very much. Breaking research reveals that giraffes aren't silent at all. They do, in fact, talk to each other. And a lot of that chatter happens late at night. Okay. The newly named Annette with her newly attached transmitter is happily reunited with the herd. Giraffes like to stick together in related family groups sometimes called a tower of giraffes. The females even form nurseries together to take extra care of their calves. Annette's transmitter signal will allow the scientists to follow the whole herd. At night, they are surprisingly active. Researchers use a thermal camera to detect the giraffe's body heat. So now, they can see them. In this brand new research, scientists finally capture the sounds that giraffes only seem to make at night. At 92 Hertz, 
Those sounds aren't quite infrasound, like an elephant's rumbles, but they're not easy for us to hear. We may not speak giraffe, but confirmation of this humming means another mystery is on its way to being solved. The world is changing for giraffes. While Annette and her family roam the open savanna in South Africa, her cousins in East Africa have a different story to tell. These Maasai giraffes live on the doorstep of Kenya's capital in Nairobi's National Park. City skyscrapers are their backdrop. As humans encroach, the giant mammals carry on with their lives. The noise doesn't seem to bother them, as long as they can find enough to eat. A particular kind of acacia grows here, the whistling thorn. It's a great example of a symbiotic relationship where one species helps another. With its swollen thorns, this tree provides a home for ants. The ants protect the tree from large greedy grazers, like this giraffe. When the ants attack, they permeate the air with pheromones, which brings out even more ants. The giraffe's thick skin makes him pretty resilient for a while. Acacias are constantly fighting not to be eaten. While this tree utilizes ants, other acacias produce tannins in their leaves. The instant animals start to nibble, which eventually makes them too bitter to eat. The giraffes have had enough and move on to another tree. Their browsing stimulates the tree to grow more leaves. They're like the landscape gardeners of the savanna. Back in Namibia, the desert-dwelling giraffes don't have time for landscape gardening. The competition for food and water is becoming severe. The family of elephants is hogging the only waterhole. And even these towering mammals are not going to mess with them. Finally, they leave. And the giraffes make their move. One elephant teases them. It's hard to know what he'll do. Eventually the big bull leaves and the coast is clear to get a drink at last. Which in itself is risky. The giraffe's awkward stance for drinking makes them vulnerable to the desert lions. But these antelopes are no threat. The giraffes can only afford to leave their head down for a minute. When they pop back up, these special valves in their veins stop them from getting dizzy. They can guzzle many gallons in one go. After quenching their thirst, the giraffes are ready to journey on. 
They retain most of the water they get from food, so their waste is very dry. It will be weeks before they need to drink again. The tallest of the mammals is a true survivor in the harshest of lands. Across this vast continent, these magnificent animals continue to rule as Africa's great giant.